I am an Obsidian user through and through for all of my personal research and all of the work that I do by myself in collecting information and notes. However, as I mentioned recently, Obsidian has some um, struggles with collaborative work and those that aren't that familiar with the way Obsidian syncs across multiple devices. Uh, so I've been exploring Scrintle. Scrintle are sponsoring this video, but I explored the tool a while ago and I wasn't a big fan because of the, well, the boards, as you can see here, were a little bit limiting in what it is that I wanted to use my note taker for. For a bit of orientation, if I hold control and scroll my mouse wheel, it's just like the canvas in Obsidian because it is a mind map canvas type tool. If you click on a tool, I can then drag and create the arrows. Click, change the color, I can edit the title. This is a board, which I'll go to in a second. You can open the board, copy link, etc., etc. It's what you would really expect from a mind map tool. But they've recently changed this and added a different type of board. So if I go to boards, you can see I've got a board that I accidentally made a few minutes ago, a board version two, and then an old board. If I click on this board, you can see this is just a brand new empty board with nothing in it. I click at the top. Uh, I'm going to delete it. And instead of going to the browse section of all the boards, this is like a, a catch all. This is all of the docs. These are all the boards. These are all the tags. I'm going to go to the start section, which is the book. And this book, I'm planning it out inside a screen tool because the canvas in Obsidian is good, but doesn't have these features that I'll go through now. So to start with, you can see down the bottom, we've got two different tools. Now, I personally am not a fan of the different tools because like, you can left click and drag, but then you have to go to the other tool by using M to then move around. You can't middle mouse click and move around when you're on this tool, which it's, it's, it's a user experience thing that maybe you'll change, maybe it won't. But you can see this is a, a block. It is just a block. It's not a, a card and I can attach this to another block and now they are connected. I can then click and move the block away. I can even put it into this dock. So you can see I've done this twice now. If I drag this out, it essentially does a copy and paste. And now it's copying that block to different parts of the canvas. So if I've got a sentence and I want to drag it over, I can, and it makes it its own block, which I can then, as you can see, create a dock from. So if we create a dock, now I've got a new dock with the constraints led approach block inside of it. So let's just track back a second. We are currently in the book board. And here we have a chapter one doc. If I click on the doc, uh, let's close that down for a sec. Uh, you can see there's the chapter one doc. And this is the new doc that I just created inside of the book board. There's the new doc and I can change the doc title. to uh, Let's say constraints led approach. And now when I click out, you can see the doc has been changed. And if we go back to the browse docs, you can see there's the constraints led Doc. What is a really nice but small feature is if I left click, it actually opens up a sort of like a pop up window for all of these so I can have a look around and navigate. So this is another dock that's linked inside of a dock. And I can do this whilst browsing all of the docks. And when I go to a board, obviously, it now shows me the boards, go back to the docks, it saves that view. So when I'm doing the work, instead of it being tabs and panes like it is in Obsidian, they are pop up windows and docks. And I know there's a community plugin in Obsidian, which sort of mimics this feature. But if we head over to the constraints leg dock, you can see there is the traditional file or writing that you would normally expect to see in a note taking tool. If we go into the doc and start typing, so typing more words, it's just like any other doc writing. If we go slash, we have the slash commands. And for those familiar with note taking tools, it is the same sorts of things. So all your headings, heading one to six, your bullet list, order list, task, quote, code block, dividers, all your embeds, so images and PDFs and videos, etc., alongside date and time reference. But those more familiar with linking tools or network thought tools or BASB tools, or whatever you want to call them, there are links down the bottom. So you can see we've got a backlink to the book board, but also a link to chapter one and obviously the constraints led approach because that's what the file is. Oh, sorry, the doc is different names and there's the chapter. Now, I'm still trying to fully grasp what these links are because I believe this is showing because the constraints led doc is in the boards. But chapter one, as you can see, doesn't have what I would call an outgoing link to the constraints led approach. And the constraints led approach doesn't have an outgoing link to chapter one either. But because they're in the same board, they are showing up as linked. So it's kind of like an inherent link. If I come into the chapter one doc and go plus and start typing constraints led approach, you can see there's the doc that appears. Now I've created the link inside of the constraints led approach. I have a backlink. 
you can see we've got the board's inherent links that expands and then the backlinks and inside the backlinks we've got chapter one so the chapter one is the ecological dynamics link which is there and the constraints of their approach link and I can then click on the down arrow and see in ecological dynamics I've got those links so I can explore the level of links inside of the doc without having to go to the doc hopefully that makes sense and I'm not speaking gobbledygook so if I click on ecological dynamics and bring that one up you can see we've got ecological psychology dynamical systems theory but there is also a link to evidence b now I don't want that one so I'm just going to delete the link and yes permanently delete that link so we have two in Obsidian that we called outgoing links. These are just called normal links. And then we have two backlinks. So they are links from chapter one and idea three going back to ecological dynamics. But then we also have the board links if they are linked inside of a board. If I have a look at idea three, you can see we actually have a different color for idea three. This is inside one of the uh, default files that Printle made for me. But I can go to the top three dots, change color, and then select a color so let's go light blue if we now go back to the book board i want to delete that block that was backspace and then backspace i now want to add that idea three so if i go slash link doc idea three and then click it you can see now i've got the option because it's in line to go into the doc and it gives us the uh, the pop-up now at the moment idea three is not actually in this board but i can use this sort of location looking icon and click it and now I can drop it into the board. So now the idea three is in the board, which gives you all of the board links down the bottom of the dock. And while we're up here, if I click on the three dots, show display options, I can compact. So it just shows the title snippet just shows the bits that you've actually got in the file or the full file. And you can show or hide links independently of the rest of the information and then of course you've got the open button which actually opens up the dock and then three options which lets you start it to the starred panel and then loads of other information which i don't need and idea three is a dock i don't need so i can delete it from here now i know i'm probably going to be writing quite a lot inside of these chapters so i'm going to span it out a little bit and you can see i've just added a, a little sentence there you can do all the the bold underline strike through etc etc highlight and add links, all the stuff you'd normally see with text. But what's exciting for me is if I want to move this paragraph to another chapter or experiment with it in another chapter, I can, like say, just drag it straight over. I'm going to drag it in and then drag it over. Now I can work on the paragraph, put the paragraph in different places for different edits. And the reason this is useful is because if I have a source inside of Scrintle and the source has a quote and I want to adjust the quote or adjust the information to actually make sense in the sentence that I'm making, I can keep it consistent inside of my source. So let's say I've got this quote inside of this source and it's really important. I can keep the quote, but then I can drag it into the chapter and say okay yeah this is a quote but i actually want to change the information so i'm going to remove it from being a quote say this is really important and then in brackets say this is really important and then add the link at the end to say okay this is the source that it came from i've still got the quote there i've still got the information here and i have the information in my board to know okay this is a quote that was really useful and my use case right now for scrintel is actually using it for research documentation because the editor that i'm working with doesn't use the same obsidian vault as me so i'm exporting it from obsidian to word sending it to them via word for them to turn into a table on their own screen rather than just having it through a google doc because they don't like google docs so we're going to test out screen tour that way for collaborative features but i'm also going to do it for writing this book and sharing different chapters with some of the coaches that i've been working with but of course this is all subject to change depending on how workflows evolve and how the tool gets developed